We lost up to 50% of our corals at, uh, now three years ago in 2016. This is mainly the branching corals. So we're talking about uh, Acropora, for example. And uh, yeah, we lost up to 50% to of these corals. We try to restore the reef uh, by using these nurseries. The nurseries help for the survival and the growth of the corals. So we took what we call the coral of opportunities. This is coral already broken by hunter or by snorkelers. And we let them grow from one year, one year and a half until they reach a good size, uh, up to 15 to 20 centimeters. Then we transplant them uh, on the seafloor. The two yellow boy, this is our first nursery. Okay. And the black boy, the nursery is. Mm -hmm. So they are and then we transplant up to four to The tourists here, they are attracted, okay, by the beautiful landscape, but also by what is beneath in the underwater. They want to meet with turtles, they want to see colorful fish. So if we have just dead corals, we don't have all this. Eight the length. C5, C2. New coralites. So you can see the new coral polyp growth coming here. We can control the temperature in here so that even if everything dies out there, we've still got some remnants here that we can then grow up and put back out on the reef. So if you like, it's a, a last ditch safety stop. However, the way that we try and do things is that the corals that we have in here are survivors. They have survived this previous bleaching attempt. Five three. It's one of the most diverse habitats imaginable. Imagine a rainforest on steroids and that's what you have on a coral reef. It's just that people don't see it. People see the rainforest and they can see all of these different layers of complexity with the different plants and the different animals inhabiting those niches. Exactly the same is true on the coral reef but multiplied so many different times because you had so many microenvironments there. So it's an enormous treasure trove of biodiversity.
there was a sound, I see, like you said, there was some uh, chain in. It's that. We need to make the monitor, yeah. They all. The thing is, what do you want your grandchildren to see? Do you want them to see uh, a sea full of uh, plastic pollution, full of bottles, or you want to be able to, to, to show or, or, or the future generation the coral reef, the fish biodiversities? This is, this is something specific from, from, from the ocean, specific on Earth, so I think we need to preserve that. Even if you look across the marine water heritage sites, I mean, when you look at Australia's great, if we going for a business as usual uh, scenario uh, where we continue to um, increase our uh, climate emissions, then we are standing to lose the majority of those coral reef systems by 2100. That's at the end of this century. That's less than 80. I mean, that's about 80 years uh, from now. That's quite substantial and quite important when you look at that.